aren't you about to start a picture with just one cone, brother? I actually just finished it. Yes. Oh, you just um, finished it. Yeah, it did. Um, we recorded Macbeth uh, actually in the spring, in the in the when it was still very much COVID time. Recorded mm. it in uh, in New York in the in the spring, and I'm not sure. I mean, I think we're assuming it will come out before the end of the year, but I don't know an exact um, distribution schedule. And did you have COVID style recording sessions where it was one at a time kind of thing? No, um, I actually, interestingly, you know, we did. You know, I tried my best to write it for strings because I knew what the recording situation was going to be like. So if it, string players can wear masks, I did everything I could to write just for strings. But it is Macbeth, and there are the you know there are battle scenes and things. And in the end, I actually mm-hmm. needed brass, so that presented a challenge. Yeah. Uh, but we did the brass in their own session, uh, six players, like twelve feet apart, with gobos in between them, and um, and then after they played. No one was allowed in the room for four hours while they, you know, circulated the air and disinfected the place. It was like a hazmat site. Jeez. But I was so happy we got it done. And you can believe me, those brass players were happy. They probably had a call, you know, in a year. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, yeah, we just finished it. And actually, it, hit, it touches on something we were talking about before the first break, which is we we're talking about synth and orchestra and stuff. And one of the things I did in this was to... Uh, you know, record uh, Shelley basses um, acoustically, but then put them through distortion uh, devices uh, to distance them a little from the acoustic sound. And I think that's something people are doing a lot these days, or it's a direction, definitely a, a direction that the sound is headed these days as a manipulation. Also makes it clear, sound. as I even imagine it, that it's a Macbeth that has a particular emotional point of view that might not just be acoustic and old fashioned that it's going to That's correct. say say yeah. things that distorting the strings may help an audience understand we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's a, it's a distorted world. That's right. Is this uh the first time it's a solo Cohen? That is correct. Um I think it really is. Um Ethan has written and produced on his own, I know, but this is the first time Joel's um, yeah, d- directing on its own. Ethan just didn't want to make movies anymore. Are we going to look forward to a headline that says Coen Brothers at war over who gets Carter next? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think you are. Uh, Ethan seems very happy uh, doing what he's doing. And um, and I'm not sure what Joel will do after this. Uh, but, you know, they also have a ton of scripts that they've written over the years that are just sitting you know, on various shelves. Uh, so I hope maybe they get back to some of those cause I've read some of them and they're, and they're great. Uh, but I don't know. It's, you know, we're all at an age where you just don't know what's, you know, we, we could all retire, but I don't think that's exactly going to happen. But, um, I mean, for instance, Fran, in many ways, her career is taking off as a producer and, uh, and actor. Uh, so yeah, it's, I, I think it's a wonderfully unpredictable business, right? That's, um, I just don't know. 